Today we're going to talk about something called a JavaScript object. And an object inside JavaScript is basically something we've touched on before in previous episodes, but I haven't really talked about it as in depth as I would like to. So we're going to spend this episode, maybe a couple more, talking about what exactly a JavaScript object is, how we can create them, and how we can access them inside the browser. Now, if you come from a PHP background, um, JavaScript objects is slightly different from PHP objects. So don't think PHP if you come from a PHP background. Just kind of start over from new and just learn this from scratch because the concept is slightly different. So when I say that we've actually done objects before without actually really gone in depth in it, uh, what I basically mean is that when we create something like a variable inside our website, let's say I create a variable called person, and set it equal to a name. For example, my name, which is Daniel. Right now we created an object. And this might be slightly confusing for some people to understand, especially if you come from a PHP background. But whenever we have a variable that is equal to some kind of value, we have an object. Now, don't get me wrong. This is a very, 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 very basic object. Okay, this doesn't really have any properties in it, meaning that right now we don't know if this person has an age, you know, first name, last name, gender, hair color, that sort of thing. Right now, person is just equal to Daniel. And that's a very, very basic, simple object. So what we can do is we can actually go ahead and create an object, you know, a variable that has different properties in it, such as age, hair color, first name, last name, and then we can access these values later on. So let's actually go ahead and create a more advanced object. Let's actually go ahead and say we have a person that is not equal to Daniel because that's way too simple. Instead, we're going to go ahead and say, well, this person has different types of properties. And the way we do that is by writing curly brackets. So right now we have curly brackets. And then inside the curly brackets, we're going to list all the different properties. So the first property I would like to have inside this person is going to be the first name. Now, just to make this more simple for you guys, I'm just going to write it out in one line to start with, because often online you will actually see people write it out in one line or multiple lines. So just so you guys don't get confused, I'm going to go and write in, in just one line first and then in separate lines afterwards, which is probably my preferred way of doing it. Um, so we have a first name and the first name is Daniel. And do bear in mind that I did actually use colon inside in between my first name, you know, the actual name of the property and the value. So first name is equal to Daniel. And then we're going to say comma space. Then the next property we would like to have in here is my last name. So I'm going to write last name colon space Nielsen, which is in fact my last name, comma. And do bear in mind, now we have two different properties. So if I were to say, okay, this is too confusing, this is in one line, I can actually go ahead and move it down to the next line. So every time we have a comma, I'm gonna go ahead and move everything down one line. Just so we have a list of stuff going downwards, which to me is much more simple to look at. So this is how I would actually do it in future episodes. I'm gonna go ahead and go down to the next line and I'm gonna say, well, we also have a age, which in my case is going to be 25. Do bear in mind, I didn't put it inside a string because it's a number. You don't have to. We could put it inside a string if we wanted to, but I'm just going to go ahead and leave it as a number. Next line, I'm going to go ahead and say I have a hair color, which is brown. Now, because this is the last property I'm going to put inside this object, I'm not going to put a comma at the end. Because if we were to look at this as one line of code, you know, we wouldn't actually put a comma at the end of the last property because it wouldn't make sense because it's ending off anyways. So we're going to go ahead and just leave out the comma from the last one. Okay. So now we have a very basic object here that has different properties in it that has different values. So if we were to actually go down to the next line and say, well, what if I want to write this out inside the monitor and I'm going to go ahead and write documents dot write and inside the parentheses i'm going to go ahead and say person punctuation first name 
And that's how we access the different properties. We first of all need to write the object name and then whatever property we wrote inside the object. And then we can actually go ahead and write out that specific property, you know, separating it with a punctuation. So if we were to save this, refresh the browser, you guys can see it says Daniel. If I were to change the first name to my age, you guys can see we get my age instead. So that's the basic idea behind at least the properties that we have inside an object. And when it comes to, you know, these sort of objects, we not only have properties like the ones we have here, you know, first name, last name, age, hair color. We also have methods, which we're going to talk about in the next episode, because I think we should just focus on talking about the properties in this episode uh, to not make it too confusing and make it look like it's much more difficult than it really is. So to make it more simple, I'm just going to go ahead and split the object episodes into multiple parts. So we talk about one thing per episode. So I hope you guys enjoyed this episode and I'll see you guys next time.